Welcome back everybody to another uh, hopefully short but enlightening video here at Blue Glow Electronics. Today what we're going to talk about are um, electronic cleaners and, um, and that includes the Deoxit brand. The reason I'm making this video, I had a friend reach out to me and they basically said they had a Harman Kardon 330 that was cutting out and they sent me a video of it and I started listening to the, to the watching the video and listening to it and I thought you know what it sounds like dirty pots um, so sent an email back to my friend basically said hey would you be up for uh, trying to clean your pots with some deoxit and he said sure tell me which one of your videos might would have that in it and I said well you know probably a couple of them do but I can't remember exactly which ones and where so uh, I thought I'd just make a special video just on this topic and uh, hopefully enlighten you a little bit so this here on the left is deoxit D5 and it's probably the most commonly used um, cleaner as far as cleaning switches, potentiometers, um, sliders, faders, etc. in the industry. And it's probably the best um, audio restoration or electronics restoration um, device that's been created in the last few decades. Uh, this stuff's pretty amazing stuff. Um, here we've got some fader lube, we'll talk about that. Here we've got some standard electronic cleaner and we'll talk about when that's good to use and when it's not. And here we have some just uh, electronics uh, lubricant and we'll talk about when that's good to use and when not. Um, the Deoxit D5 here, one of the things that's real confusing out there in the industry is if you, um, if you go to buy some Deoxit, it looks like there's about a dozen different types and there's um, you know, different intensities. There's D5, there's D100, there's F5, there's F100. They come in little dropper bottles, uh, different shapes and sizes. And you're, you're sitting there going, well, which one do I buy and which should I use? As well as Deoxit uh, comes in uh, a couple different uh, looks and feels and brands almost. And uh, I'll show you show you here a little more about that. Let's, let's, let's jump over to the, uh, to look at a web page real quick. Okay, so Keg Laboratories are the people that um, basically invented and make and produce Deoxit. And um, they actually resell it under some other names. I'll show you that here in a minute. But there's this uh, Deoxit product selection guide that they give you. And if you actually click here on the uh, PDF, it'll take you to an entirely, uh, you know, an entire page here that'll walk you through all the different uses of Deoxit and the different types and what's the difference between them. However, it kind of comes from a chemical standpoint, and it doesn't really give you a lot of real-world application uses. So um, we're going to jump back over here in a minute, and I'm going to try to give you some of that. Okay, so we jumped over to Amazon here, and I just typed in Deoxit, and D5 is the most popular brand or um, rendition of it. And if you notice, this is made by Keg, and it's, um, it's basically $13.32 with free shipping here on Amazon for this bottle of Deoxit. And notice the uh, the label on this thing and how it looks. I'll show you. You can search on Amazon for um, the Oxid D5 and come up with a different looking bottle here. And it says it's hey, it's made by Hosa Cable, and um, and it's only eleven dollars and ninety five cent. Well, what's how it's the exact same chemicals, exact same product. They're just um, repackaging this, um, selling it through Hosa Cable, and it's um, it's actually cheaper. So. Um, this eleven dollars and ninety-five cent, if you have Prime, is the uh, absolute best price out there going anywhere on this uh, stuff. And um, if you'll notice, hey, I purchased some of this a while back. So hold tight, and we'll jump back to the desk. So onward and upward is in a little bit of the difference between these things. So deoxid D5, the five percent stand, five stands for five percent of this solution inside of this bottle is the actual uh, magic secret sauce or the deoxid chemical and 75% um, of what's inside of this bottle is mineral spirits which is another solvent and 20% of it is the propellant when you buy a bottle of this this stuff's uh, pretty safe on plastics um, one thing I will tell you about this it is designed to dry slowly so um, when you use it It'll get inside of a potentiometer, you know, inside of your radio, and it may continue to drip for another five or ten minutes. Um, so it takes a little while for this stuff to dry. You just have to know that when you're working with it. And, and the other thing is, while it is drying, this stuff is flammable, okay? 
They also make a model called Deoxit DN5, which dries almost instantly. Um, and it's, not that, it's not flammable for that long, so it's used in industrial uses where you can't have flammable materials around. The downside to the DN5 is it dries right away, which means it doesn't have the soaking properties that this does. That's the reason this is designed to dry slowly, is it's designed to get in there and kind of dissolve corrosion, like it says here. Um, this also has some uh, some lubricant in it. Uh, it's part of the, the 5%, and it also has um, a chemical in here as part of the 5% that helps protect surfaces um, over the long haul. So up next you have something called Deoxit D100, which I do not have a bottle of. And what it is basically is it's 100% spray, but it's not 100% of the chemical. Um, if you look at the makeup of it, it has 20% active ingredient, so it has a little more of the ingredient in it. Um, but it basically has 80% um, propellant then at that point, and there is zero mineral spirits. So you lose out on some of the um, solvent... Um, type activities going on with the uh, D100 in that case. Um, from that point, there's also another one that I do not own right now, which is called Deoxit Gold. And Deoxit Gold is really designed for gold contacts. So you may have some high-end audio equipment or headphones or uh, maybe a computer or something where on the inside of it, the connectors that inside of a plug or something are, are gold-plated. Um, those you would want to use some deoxit gold because the chemical in this doesn't really do a great job of uh, cleaning the type of corrosion that, that um, develops on gold contacts. Whereas this is really good for anything that has copper, brass, silver, tin, nickel, etc. Um, would be a good use for uh, the deoxit D5. This is by far the most popular used um, of anything when restoring audio equipment, stereos, Radios, um, you know, ham radios, etc. Uh, very, very popular. Um, okay, so if you're wondering what you would use deoxid D5 on, it's you know any type of potentiometer, any type of switch. Uh, here's just a wide variety of examples of different types that you might find inside of a radio or audio gear. Um, and I'll show you here in just a little bit how to uh, how to actually use the cleaner to get inside of those and clean them. The reason I want to show you those is up next is Deoxit Fader D5. And you may wonder, well, when do I use D, you know, the Fader D5? Um, I will tell you that the Fader um, has the same 5%. They also make Fader F100. It's the same story as over here. Um, the 5% um, has you know 5% active, whereas the 100% has a little more of the active ingredient in it, but it's only 20%, not 100%. <laughs> Uh, but it doesn't have the mineral spirits uh, cleaning agent. But what the fader has that the deoxit um, only has a little of, this is heavy, heavy on the lubricant. If you'll notice here, it starts out by saying cleans and lubricates. Um, there's a good bit of lubricant in this. So if you're, if you're cleaning something that ultimately needs some um, really good lubrication on the inside, and that, that could be a potentiometer, you know, like one of these, that for whatever reason, you know, maybe the parts up inside of here where the uh, shaft goes through the barrel here, uh, maybe it, it needs some good lubrication because it's just not turning freely or whatnot. Um, you can always clean with the deoxid here and get it really good and clean because uh, this has more cleaning properties to it. And then come along and uh, spray it with some fader lube afterwards to get some extra lubrication down inside of there. But what a what the deoxid fader is really made for are... Um, uh, both slide controls and fader controls. Anytime you have some type of uh, device here where when you, when, when you slide it along, what you really have happening is a, um, you know, a basically a piece of, uh, in this case, it's uh, kind of a phonetic um, carbon fiber board or whatnot. And on top of that is painted on the inside, and you might be able to see it down in here. But what is painted on top of it, and I'll throw a picture up here on the... Uh, on the video is just a strip of it's either a carbon compound or it is a um, conductive plastic that gets painted on there and what happens is you have this wiper that then wipes across it going back and forth here and um, 
If it's not lubricated, what will happen is that wiper turns basically into a uh, little <laughs> shovel or a chisel and it starts um, eating away at that compound strip across there. And so you got to keep these things very well lubricated. These things, little slaughter controls are used in everything. I'll give you an example. On the front of our Marantz, um, they, they're used in, where that goes in the very center. And this is your balance control, a little more right, a little more left. You know, they're used, I'll give you an example, on the right-hand side of a um, Techniques 1200 turntable. This is the, you know, there's a, these for the pitch control. Um, you know, they're used in uh, all sorts of recording studio, you know, where you see the um, equalizers where they're pushing the slider controls up or down. But that is where you would want to use this stuff. Um, you know, it gets inside of here. Um, I'll put a little bit in here. And uh, you can see this thing sliding much easier now. It's got good lubrication in there. We would probably wipe that off uh, really well. I have to get a paper towel or something, but you get the gist of it. It gets in there and uh, just clean. Not only is it clean, but it also then um, you know, lubricates really well. And you can see the stuff coming out of here. Look at it. What's dripping out. It's got all kinds of crud in there that um, was inside of this thing. So sometimes you may want to clean it first with deoxid if it's you know needs a lot of cleaning properties, and then come along right after that and hit it with some fader lube, and um, you know put a good bit of lubrication on the inside of that. Okay, I keep this old towel laying around, and I use it for just that purpose. What I just did, um, one um, you know you see it's got lots of stains here from dripping outside of controls, but two you can kind of use it. To, to wipe off and I just kind of keep this laying under the bench and from time to time we'll wash it off but um, that's when you'll use fader and I'll show you come back around and show you how to use this the um, electronics cleaner so what it is if you think about it it's probably I don't I haven't seen the ingredients but it's probably mostly just mineral spirits it's just a solvent it's designed to get in there and really clean contacts and if you'll notice the picture on the front here that's what it's great for if you've got automotive contacts where you got plugs that plug together or um, you know, whatnot. This is great stuff. I'll tell you where I personally use this. Um, and, and let me just show you a picture. Okay, that's a nice Marantz 2270 that I've been working on. And right here, this is a great place. Um, these are air gap capacitors inside of the tuner section. And I will take this uh, stuff right here and basically just spray it down in here really good because it's got a lot of... Uh, it's got a lot of pressure to it and it gets in there and what it does is it just cleans off these uh, little aluminum plates really well usually I'll turn the dial after I do that you know and uh, it gets down inside of there really well and you know you want to get the other side of the plates too as well so uh, you come back along really good down in there and um, you know, be careful with the overspray I'm probably a little sloppy here with one hand but yeah, it really gets those things cleaned out and uh, gets any debris or dust down in there that would uh, impede the movement of them or uh, cause arcing. You know, Typically in a radio like this, there's low power going through these. But these same type of air gap capacitors get used in um, RF amplifiers and, uh, and ham radio gear and whatnot um, for the part of the tuning tank on the output. And so you've got high voltage sitting across these, you know, maybe four or five, six hundred volts. And if you... Um, if you get some dust down in there, maybe or maybe a little bug's crawled in there, all of a sudden it'll start ar you know, arcing across that thing as a conductor, and then it'll start burning little pits in your uh, plates. So it's really good to clean that, uh, clean those with, you know, any type of plug-in connector. Sometimes these um, these boards here will have a plug connectors on the bottom of them or whatnot. Uh, this stuff here would be great for cleaning those types of things. Which leads me to the last thing here, which is just some plain old electronics lubricant. So, really what's inside of this bottle, there's really nothing that does any cleaning. It's just the lubricant part. And I'll show you where I use that. If you'll um, notice here on this Marantz, you've got the spinning wheel here that, um, that you turn to adjust the uh, FM tuner. And what happens when you spin this, this little cord here goes and moves the... Um, dial indicator back and forth and the same cord goes down underneath here and you can see this white plastic wheel here as I spin this uh, knob you can see it's turning that plastic wheel which is ultimately turning these air gap capacitors so a couple places I'll use the lube at um, 
down after I've cleaned these air gap capacitors, I'll get down on each end of them here where the uh, where the center shaft goes through the body here. Typically, it's either a bearing or a bushing right here. Um, and the same thing down on the other side here. We'll hit it. Same as on this plastic wheel right here that turns the little um, on the very end of it right here. You can see where the clip ring, e clip ring is. Just spray that a little bit. Um, and basically what you're doing then is you're lubricating the, um, the parts of this that have to support the turning. It's basically an axle and a bearing or an axle and a bushing scenario. The other part that I'll use this on are these little wheels right here. So you can come along here and you just give it a little squirt on here and this stuff will work its way way down in there really good. Um, but it really helps with the, uh, the lubrication of the, the string pulleys themselves. Um, and the good thing about this stuff is it's um, really good and not corrosive so it, um, it it won't eat your string up it um, doesn't harm any plastics and it just gets on there and gets a good little bit of lubrication to these pulley systems you know same thing with this uh, right inside here there's a little bearing where this uh, and the same on the bottom down here below it where the uh, and I have to get that from the other side but there's a bearing that, that helps this little uh, flywheel here spin freely so it's just a little bit of lubricant to get in there and the fact that it's uh, you know electrically safe won't arc doesn't eat anything up it's a really good uh, really good scenario here for that so now you know how and where I use this electronics lubricant okay before I dive in and show you how I use the deoxid I thought I'd just talk just a little more about a couple things that are interesting when you can get this stuff in a needle dropper format, so much like I've got needle dropper here for turn ta turntable oil, um, you can get deoxid from the factory in a bottle like this where you would get in there and drip it in there versus spraying it so it doesn't have the propellant in it at that point. It also comes in a bottle kind of like um, fingernail polish where you, uh, you know, you screw the top off and then it has a little... Uh, plastic piece with a brush on it and you can get and brush it into places that it, it also comes in a pen type flavor if you've ever used like a uh, one of the pens that you push down a paint pen or whatever and it kind of leaks out it comes in that format too um, but for 99.9% .9 of the time this is what I'm using right here I'm um, just keep in mind this stuff has more solvent more cleaning more corrosion breaking down properties um, this has a little of that um, but it has a whole lot of lubricant. This has a whole lot of cleaning properties and a little bit of lubricant. Um, I have read on the forums where some people say to using the gold, go ahead and pay the extra money and buy the gold and use it on everything because they say it not only will it clean the gold but it will use everything else. But um, I've not tried that myself but I have read some people, uh, you know, some people on the forums that say that that's what they do. You know, it's a good little bit higher. It's about $19, $18, $19 for the bottle of gold, whereas I'm getting this for $11. So I just soon use this, save the money, uh, pass the savings along to the customer, and then, uh, you know, when I need the gold, use it. But, um, you know, different people probably have different opinions. And anytime I make one of these videos, what you're getting are my opinions. Um, there's no rule, fact, or law that says what I'm doing is right or wrong. It's just what I do. Um, one last thing I want to show you about this Deoxid D5 before I show you how to use it. It's a, it's a, it's a warning to heed. So as many of you know, I've got some teenage kids, and, I, and I've been using this stuff for a long time. Well, when my kids were really little, you know, I would come home sometimes, and I would have washed my clothes, and um, all of a sudden my clothes would have some stains on it, um, kind of like this right here. You can see there's about five or six stains on this shirt. And I would fuss at my wife. I would say, why did you let the kids leave a crayon in the in the uh, dryer? And apparently it melted and it got all over my clothes because I've got stains in it I can't get out. And she would say, I'll talk to the kids make sure they don't put any uh, crayons in it. Well, the kids got older and um, you know, quit using crayons. And, and yet I kept finding these stains on my shirts. And so I would fuss at my wife. I would say, please tell the kids to quit putting quit putting chapstick in their pockets and it falling out in the out of their clothes into the dryer apparently the chapstick's melting in the dryer and then when I'm drying my clothes or washing my clothes it's getting stains on them that I can't get out and then my kids got older and they got where they washed their own clothes <laughs> and um, 
I came to realize it wasn't my kids' crayons nor the chapstick causing the problem. Because I've got lots of shirts like this. Come to find out, it is deoxid. Um, you know, I would be cleaning something, I'd get a little overspray, it would come back on my shirt. And sure in the world, sure as the world, um, I finally figured out that I'm causing these problems myself. And it is deoxid. So when you're using this stuff, I highly recommend wearing an old shirt that you don't care about. I put this one on a lot to, uh, to clean. That's why it's got multiple stains all over the front of it. There's a few more over here. Um, because, I, you know, it's already got stains. If it gets a few more, what's the big deal? But um, I don't know what it is about this stuff, but um, it, it changes the color of the shirt. And I've tried everything from, you know, uh, zap kind of stuff to goop to um, all the major cleaning stuff. I, I cannot get these stains out of shirts. So you've been warned when using Deoxid, wear an old t-shirt. Okay, you can see here on the back of this Marantz, it's pretty standard setup. Um, you know, you've got some ganged, and when, when I say ganged, it means two connected together with one shaft um, potentiometers. And the reason you see ganged a lot is one side will be left channel, one side will be right channel. You'll see it here, you see it up here. Um, you've also got some switch controls here that change you between aux, FM, AM, etc. Um, the Deoxit D5 is great for all of these. You can get in here and kind of spray inside of these things. And then you, you, what you want to do is uh, turn the knob repeatedly back and forth and let the uh, little wipers use the Deoxit to kind of work in there and, and clean things. Um, you'll notice you've also got some potentiometers right here that are used to control the bias on the outputs of these things. If you're ever setting the bias, a lot of times I'll spray a little deoxid inside of these before I go adjusting them just to make sure they're good and clean and no corrosion in there so your bias doesn't drift over time. you got a set of potentiometers here on the phono board that, that, that adjust the bias and uh, I'll set on that. If I'm ever adjusting that, I'll clean those as well. And then you got things down here like your, you know, your uh, bass mid, um, tone controls, you know, hidden, kind of hidden in behind this board here. You got the uh, the volume control, and, uh, and I think it's the. Uh, I have to flip it around and see what the other one is. But the bottom line is here, you're going to want to find an opening inside of the potentiometer. Sometimes they have a hole on the side here. A lot of times, right down in here in the top, you can see um, right here where the blades, the wiper blade controls go down in there. And you can get your, your nozzle down in there really good like that and kind of spray really well. Hit the next one really well in the same space. And then once you got the stuff in there, then you come along and work this thing back. And you can see this stuff dripping out down here. Look at this. Um, it's all over my finger. And so you want to use, typically keep a paper towel handy here, which I'll do. And uh, use your paper towel and come along after you've done that. Just to keep it from dripping down in, getting on the glass of your, you know, your uh, the front, front of it, your dial indicator or, or whatnot. Um, and then you'll just keep working that thing back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Um, probably up a dozen times or more and just make sure that thing gets really good and clean down in there. But, you know, um, other potentiometers may not have the same kind of opening. A lot of them, you can see right here on the top, will have these little notches. Um, that's kind of hard to see. Let me flip it over and show you on another one. All right, you can see it here on this side. So one side down on the bottom has got the wipers, and it's kind of hard to get under there. Like, how would you get the can up under there to spray? It's really tough. But a lot of times they'll have a notch here on the back side kind of cut in as a dip. And you can uh, kind of spray in here from one side. Kind of get your thing and go from one side and then I'll come again from the other side you know another angle like this and get it down on the other side and then I, for this one I'd have to get a screwdriver in here and kind of adjust it back and forth but, but you get the concept it's, you can see it here on this one you can kind of spray it on one side and spray it on the other and then you start turning it um, like I said if you can get to it from the other side you got a nice little opening here right below these wiper blades really easy to get down in there um, a couple of the things I wanted to tell you. Um, you may see some potentiometers that are... Hang on one second, let me get this radio out of the way. Sometimes you may find a potentiometer like this that really has no opening anywhere. If you'll notice this thing's sealed up. This is an old precision wire, wire wound unit. And the only way to do it is you take these four tabs right here and you pry it off. And I want to do that because I want to show you what's on the inside. You see I pried the four tabs off and then this cover comes off and then on the inside you'll see here and this is the way it works. 
you notice it has this little metal wiper blade that's kind of spring-loaded so at one point right here it's touching right and then what happens is as you turn the knob this thing basically goes around in a circle here back and forth from one side to the other and coated on the inside here will either be one of two things in a potentiometer in this case this is wire wound so much like this big one here you can see the wire starts on one side and wraps around a ceramic conductor it goes all the way around to the other side and that's what makes up the resistance the distance of the wire and the type of wire um, and then you got this piece here in the middle that's actually touching it's kind of got like a little bushing here and as you can see that brush or bushing is uh, moving along and as it moves it changes the resistance between this tab and this tab and likewise this tab and this tab same thing's happening down inside of here. The, the wiper just looks a little different. Um, it's right here. And as you turn it, it kind of goes around the circle. Well, if you were looking inside of this potentiometer, instead of it being wire wound, what you would have on the inside is some type of either carbon coating or it would be a conductive plastic coating on the inside. So think about a, uh, you know, a potentiometer where it's all old and dried up and there's no lubricant in it. As you're turning this thing, these little um, the little wipers here basically turn into, like I said, a chisel or a shovel, and they start eating away at that conductive compound that's coated on the inside. So it's very important to keep keep these things not just clean but lubricated as well. What happens over time when this thing's just sitting here and it's in a, maybe a damp environment? It builds up oxidation on the inside, and it'll get to the point where these these little wipers are not touching. Um, and making good contact to the outside so that's where the deoxic comes in it does a really good job of spraying down in here and eating up all that corrosion and kind of washing it away and then it also applies a lubricant so that um, when you go to use this again and turn it uh, it's nice and lubricating and not eat it, eating away at it so um, you've seen an exposed um, potentiometer like this now same thing you can use a little deoxit to spray on those and whatnot uh, this is just a smaller version of a potentiometer, but the same concept. This is one, I, I find these pretty neat. These, this has like a little recessed area with a little open back. It's really easy to spray down in there, and it kind of gets all around. As well as it's got two notches there, and it's got some openings down here behind the um, where the wipers go in, the wiper connection. So those are super easy to get inside and clean and uh, whatnot. This. Yeah. This is a 10 term um, potentiometer used a lot of times um, where you won't really find control over the variation in your um, resistance as you're turning. It takes 10 whole turns for this thing to get from one end to the other. Well, this, all these others take one turn. Well, this one's sealed up, and there's just no getting inside of this to clean it. You can try, but about half the time or more, you'll never get it back together properly. Best thing you can do on these is just replace them. They're sealed. They're typically lubricated pretty well and sealed up. Um, you know, the, the downside to one like this, where it's got a lot of openings, well, dust gets in there and grime and moisture and whatnot. So the more openings they have, the more likely they are to need cleaning, but the easier they are to clean. The more sealed up they are, the less likely they are to need cleaning because stuff's not getting on the inside and stuff's not leaking out. But they're about impossible to clean. I hope, I hope that's making sense to you. One last thought on this stuff. So, um, pretty good general cleaner, but do not use this to clean potentiometers. If you do, please come along after it. Use something that has some lubricating qualities. What this stuff will do, it will strip every bit of the lubricant out of whatever device it is. <laughs> it's designed to break down oil and everything else. It'll basically remove all the lubricant and then you're left with a dry device. And uh, all these devices were designed to um, have some type of lubricant in them to help them um, function properly. Otherwise, the like the slider or the wipers here are just really eating away at whatever um, component there is. So, hopefully, you've learned something today. Um, there are some other types of electrical contact cleaners and whatnot out there, but this is by far the most popular um, of the series. If you'll notice, I always keep a couple bottles of this around, and as soon as I get pretty low in one bottle, I'll go ahead and order another. Um, while it's coming, just in case I run out of all these guys spare. So um, never can have enough of the Deoxid D5. And I also found out there's really no price break in buying it in quantities. You'd have to get up into buying hundreds of bottles of it to really get a price break. That that $11 is pretty darn cheap um, for this stuff. So 
thanks everybody hopefully i'll make another week uh, another video today um, with some updates and whatnot but stay tuned we're still working on our backlog of gear that marat you saw here i'm trying to get it off the bench and uh, get to a few other customer devices so i can then get around to some back around to some of my personal stuff like that got um 5881 amplifier i need to make the second series on i'm having to alternate between customer videos and then my my stuff and then the one last thought I'll leave you with, um, I'm trying something new with the audio that the people at Camtasia gave me to try to fix my problem. It is clunky, it is painful, but I'm going to see if it uh, has positive effects or not. If it does, I'll keep doing it until they make some updates. They say that they have it in their queue to fix this audio uh, issue. So thanks again, everyone. Keep watching, keep leaving us feedback, and we'll keep making great videos for you.